and they made mention of it. So we're asking everyone, please do not do that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We know you're capable. We know you love everyone. But please just follow protocol and let those who've been charged to do so do so. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Slide this thing down. I want to give you all a little insight and peek into uh, our life, my life. Right. We shared with the leadership yesterday, and uh, many of you all know that during the summer months, I'm off the of work. And I don't have to go to campus. There's no school. They cut our vacation short, and so we'll be heading back to campus sooner than later. It's an honor to be trusted to take the gospel to high schools. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. We're, we're over 14 high schools and now two junior colleges and two middle schools this year. Uh, this isn't just going to take Bible study. These are souls that are in my head. You'd be surprised at the things that these kids wrestle with on a daily basis. Um, we have a bad. Oh, we've been there and done that. I was 15 before. We were 15 in 2023. There's some stuff these kids are wrestling with, like you would not believe. And my number is public because I tell them I'm, I'm practically their pastor, so if you need me, I'm here. And throughout the school year, the phone just rings all day, every day. And it's, it's God graces you for the assignment. You know that, right? And I'm grateful because I'm, I'm not God. I'm just a human being. And God has enough wisdom to send us a team of people to help carry on the work, because one person can only go so far. If you are proof, Jesus said, you all are going to be greater works than I've done. Yeah. Meaning that me, Jesus, the Son of God himself, can only take the gospel so far. You 12 are going to take it across the world. And so when you look at the leadership in this house, that's all we're doing is we're doing the Great Commission. Because we understand one of us can go so far. But how many of us? 15? 20? About 20 of us can go a whole lot further, okay? All right. we, have, we have a couple others that uh, we'll be talking with uh, over the next month or so. Uh, God is adding to our, our ministerial staff. I'm excited about that. Uh, the bigger he grows us this way, the deeper we can go into this community and do the work that he called us to do. I'm excited. I'm so excited about that. I had it. Yeah. Yeah. Before, before I, I get to the work, go to First Chronicles 4, just park there. Pastor Lee, uh, we all know that he's been dealing with some issues health-wise. And the Sunday that he preached here, uh, he let everybody know that he doesn't have any kidneys. Uh, this man is uh, like Deacon Eddie, you know, the tinker. Uh, he's a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he has health issues. Uh, about the last 10 years, when they found cancer on a kidney, they had to remove it. Then they found cancer on another kid, the other kidney they had to remove it. And I didn't know that she could function without kidneys. I never knew that. That man getting around real good. He looks good. And so he shared with the church finally that he was waiting. He was waiting. He was waiting. And we've been talking the last couple of weeks. And he said, Bishop, I can't wait until I get my kidney. He says, I got so much work I got to do. And I'm, I'm agreeing with him. And yesterday at the leadership meeting, I pulled him and Deacon Smith aside afterwards. And I gave him a charge. And I said, so as soon as he gets up and running, he's going to take off the road with this thing. Did, did he, didn't he say he was excited? He said he was ready to go. Well, he was getting ready for church this morning. And uh, he called. And uh, he said, well, I got the call. He got through off this process to show you the favor of God. He got expedited to the top of the list last week. So, he got the call this morning. He said, Bishop, I was getting ready for church, and I got the call. He said, we got to pack it back and get to Portland. I said, well, you're not coming to Desert Osprey, but you're still going to church. Because I believe I just, 
If I know Pastor Herbert Lee, he called out and cried out and praised the name of Jesus in that airport while he's there right now. So he is in process to go to Portland to have his transplant. So we prayed this morning, we prayed for the family of the person who's transitioning. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a process, right? And then we thank God and, and we pray that, that the person transitioning knew, knew that as he was transitioning, he was giving life at the same time. And so we are excited. We're excited for him. Uh, I would ask uh, that if you do have his phone number, you know, text him. Um, if he doesn't respond, we understand why, right? Yeah. But if you don't reach out to him, uh, the best thing you can do is just pray. Yeah. Just pray and praise God for this. This is an amazing blessing for him. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. And uh, uh, you can hear it in his voice. He was overjoyed this morning. He was almost crying on the phone. And I was like, okay, you're going to make me cry too, so let's just go. But I'm excited for him. So yes, he is, he is, he is on his way. Tell somebody, baby. Amen. Uh, uh, let's go to First Chronicles 4. When you get there, go to verse 9, and please stand with me. And we are going to read these few short verses, and then we're going to go eat. Uh, all that crazy God worked up the appetite, I tell you. I don't know about y'all, but we was tired up here. We just, yeah. I had to call a break three times. They thought it was just for effect. I was tired. Break, y'all stop. Let him play. I was tired. All right, First Chronicles 4, verse 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his brother called his name. Jabez sang because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me, indeed, and enlarge my territory. Somebody say, enlarge my territory. Enlarge, if you really feel it, I enlarge my territory. That your hand will be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Look at your neighbor and say, my condition, my condition will not be my conclusion. Look at somebody else and say, my condition, my condition will not be my conclusion. My you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I, I, I know I know what it's like to be in a place where you're feeling like you're living underneath the privilege of God. You can read all these promises and you try to stand on these promises and try to proclaim these promises, but yet still sometimes life doesn't look like these promises. And so as believers, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where it doesn't look like God is favoring us. Anybody ever been there where it just seems like, it doesn't seem like God has his hand on me right now. He's got his hand on my neighbor. He's got his hand on sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. But for whatever reason, I, maybe there's something wrong with me. It doesn't seem like anything is working out in my favor. And I just want to help you for the next 20 minutes, 25 minutes to say that your present condition will not be your final conclusion. God is going to turn things around in each and every one of your lives if you just be faithful and hold on for just a little while longer. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, don't give up in doing good for a new season. At this time, you will reap if you don't lose heart, if you don't faint. And if I can encourage anybody, it's just ain't going in there. God is going to flip this thing around for you. The, the world has this saying, well, when, they, when they come into hard times, they say, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Anybody ever heard that or said that before? I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Now, now, because we're not of the world, we don't think like the world. Paul said in Romans 12 and 2, don't copy the customs and behaviors of the world. We should have a different mindset. So instead of being stuck between a rock and a hard place, I'd like to say that we're standing on a rock in a hard place. Amen. That that rock, Psalm 18 says, the Lord is my rock. He is my fortress. I'm not stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm in a hard place, but I'm standing on the rock. Amen. And because I'm standing on the rock, my condition will not be my conclusion. I serve a God that's able to pull me out of the deepest pits of life. I serve a God that's able to pull me out of the deepest pits of depression and suicidal thoughts and anxiety. I serve a God that's able to restore my finances. Just, I'm just a praise away from that miracle. I serve a God that's more than me. And so the Bible says that Jabez, and I love the fact that it opens by saying that he was he was honorable, more honorable than his 
brothers. We don't know much about Jabez. We just know that he's mentioned once there. He's mentioned another time in Scripture. And we know that he apparently had brothers. And it said that he was honorable. Now, I, I didn't realize this until two days ago. All the times I've read this text, I didn't know that honorable carried a, a, a dual meaning. Honorable. The first honorable, and the word is kaved in Hebrew, that word means that he was heavy. It was, it was, a, it was a physical weight that he carried, which could probably make sense because it says that his mother bore him in pain. And so if anybody understands, anybody gets in childbirth, if you got a 14 pound, 5 pound baby, that might be a heavy thing. Okay, all right, thank you. Right. And, so, and, and some of us were big head babies and we brought pain. We caused pain. Don't y'all laugh at my head size, y'all. Got some big heads too. I'm looking around right now. But let me call everybody out. Thank you, Brother Corey. Thank you. All right, he touched his hand, right? And he got big hands. He had to do all this for that dog. Right. But, 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 but there's that one meaning that, that he was heavy because he caused her, he caused her pain. And if, we, if, we, if we're honest with ourselves, and then we'll get there. At some point, we have to be honest enough with ourselves and God to say that sometimes we've caused people pain. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not always the victim. You're not always the one that's picked on. Sometimes, sometimes you're reaping what you sow. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you got hell in your life because you sow hell in your life. Sometimes nobody likes you because you sow not liking nobody. Please, let's not act like we're the victim in church. We don't get there and there. You might get mad, but we can shout again if you want to. Number two, though, that, 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 that honorable also means that his heart was inclined towards God. This is important to me. His heart was inclined towards God. This is important to me because whenever we stand in the need to ask, in the, in the way to ask God for anything, he wants to know where our heart is. Do you know that God is not going to bless you with a million dollars if you know that your heart is not pointed towards him? What's the point of giving you wealth and resources if you're not going to enhance my kingdom with it? Do you know that God, that God, I hear what I'm saying. Do you understand that God is not going to give you the desires of your heart if the desires of your heart, your heart's desire, don't line up to his will in your life? Okay, the scripture says, delight yourself in him and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That does not mean that he'll give you whatever your heart's desire if you just be happy in him. Because our hearts are tricky and deceitful. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, our hearts are filthy, tricky, and deceitful. If God gave me everything my heart wanted, y'all, I'd be a hot mess. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to just be honest with y'all. We were watching Ocean's Eleven. Anybody ever seen that movie? Yeah. Ocean's Eleven, it's a cold movie, baby. They, 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 these, the real thieves. And we're watching Ocean's Eleven, and they, yeah, they break into a casino, and they steal $136 odd million. dollars. I'm sitting there watching the movie, and it's like, ooh. I wish I could break into a casino. If God gave me the desires of my heart, I'd be able to run right now. All right, okay. So what the scripture is saying is if you delight yourself in him, he will assign, he will tell your heart what it should desire. If you get to know God, he will tell you what your heart should desire. How does what does that look like? Before I got to know God, I desired what I desired in the flesh. Now that I know God, I desire things that will satisfy him. So, so, so he had a heart towards God. Here's the question. Before we ask God what Jabez asked God, is our heart pointed in the direction that Jabez's heart was pointed into? Do I have a pure heart to ask God for what I'm about to ask God for? How do I know if I have a pure heart? Do my motives for what I'm asking God for line up with his word? Will what I, if I receive what, I, what I'm asking God for, will I be inclined to bless the kingdom of God with it? More importantly, do I have a grudge and hate in my heart? Because if I have a grudge and hate in my heart, my heart can't be pure. If I took an eight-ounce glass of water, nice, beautiful, clear glass of water, and I took a drop of motor oil and placed on that water, all that water becomes pure. Right? We may think that we have a pure heart because we ain't bad at nobody today. What if we're holding a grudge for 20 years? Do an inventory over your life. Who haven't you forgiven? Some people have passed on and will never get a chance to say, I'm sorry. But that, uh, forgiveness does not start with an apology. It starts with a hardship. Who are, we, who, who, are we, who are we secretly still upset with? We come to church every Sunday and we smile at them knowing that we're not happy with them. We come to church every Sunday, ooh, no black <laughs> 
and roll around the world. Who are we holding hatred against? This is what I'm saying. You can't go to God with a pure heart if you have anything impure in your heart. And so he was honored. What? We caused him pain. For honest for ourselves, we caused him pain. But two, he was honored. His heart was right before God. Now let's get back to that number one, cause us some pain. His mother named him Jacobs because he bore her pain. Yeah. We, we preach all the time. Let them label you whatever they want to label you. And you spoke some who God said that you are. But what if what they labeled you is right? What if they labeled you liar because you are? I you know, you know I, I used to get mad when people called me a liar. What mad because I wasn't a liar? Mad because I got caught. <laughs> Y'all so saying, I got caught. <laughs> so I was mad because you had the nerve to catch me and tell everybody that I want to stay now, now they're not saved no more. Okay. Uh, we, we do that. Uh, now we can talk about too safe. Y'all not too holy no more. Anybody on this side ever have to come to reality that what they're saying about me is actually true? Yeah. Anybody, anybody out there say, you know what, I can't stand the way they make me feel when they call me that name. But if you ever come down reality and say, you know what, everybody in line. As a matter of fact, if everybody's saying the same thing about me, chances are not everybody. Chances are I am the issue. Yeah. Now let's come on. Let's come on this side with y'all just for yourselves talking about this. How did you if they stood up and started calling you a liar, would you first go to the defensive? Or would you take a minute and get mature? The Lord and say, wait a minute, let me do an inventory of my heart. Am I really glad to stay saved? God, I am. See, here's the thing. Deliverance does not happen until you acknowledge that you got the issue. Why am I here? Because I'm getting ready to ask God for something huge. I'm getting ready to ask God to enlarge my territory. But God says, before I enlarge your territory, let me get you delivered first. Oh, yeah. Come on. Right, 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 right. Yeah. The hush falls over Jerusalem. Come on. That's okay. Because some of us have to own up to the fact, and I'm saying some of us because I've been where some of you may be right now, have to own up to the fact that no, I'm not perfect. No, I don't have it all together. Yes, I am a mess. Yes, I do. And here's the, here's the thing. We do it often. We, we hit the mirror and we affirm ourselves positively. I am an overcomer. I am the head and not the tail. I am, I am, I am, I am more than enough. But when was the last time you looked yourself in the mirror and said, I'm a mess. I need some help. I'm a mess up. I know that's what it is. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm saying. I need to check up from the neck up. I'm screwed. I got screws. Something's wrong with me. Yeah. Yeah. Maturity has to happen before we ask God to do anything. Because of the large of our territory. When David sinned with Bathsheba, he had a prayer. David easily, David easily could have kept lying to make things, make things go away. The Bible says David was sitting on top of the house when all the other kings, he's supposed to be a warrior, and he saw this fine woman. He said, he's fine in 2023? Let me say she, she was bad. Kids say she was busted. Okay, I want to go back. Right, right. And he saw her, and the Bible says that he wanted her. So he called his assistant and he said, hey, She's bad. Who is she? He said, oh, that's Bathsheba. That's your soldier's wife. Is that right? Bring her over here. The Bible says she comes over there. He lays with her. She gets pregnant. David then goes and tells Uriah, who had been staying at David's palace, to guard him as he's supposed to be. He says, look, you need to go home. You need to get, you know, I need you to go home and be with your wife. Uriah says, I can't leave you, King. I got to stay right here with you. David then has a chance to look himself in the mirror and says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I want y'all to go to battle tomorrow. Send Uriah out front. Man, you know that's going to, he's going to die. Yes, go to send him. David, they go out to battle. Uriah goes out front. Uriah gets killed. They come back and they tell David, man, David, Uriah went to battle, he got killed. Again, David had a chance to look himself in the mirror and get right. David put on the show. What? What happened? <laughs> what are you doing out there? David thinks he gets away with it. He has a chance to get himself to go. While David is trying to escape free, all of a sudden, his friend, his friend, his good friend, Jonathan comes and says, hey, imagine this. I'm going to paraphrase this. Imagine somebody does something so scandalous, and you have the authority to stop it. 
what would you do? They said, how dare, whoever that man is, we're going to let him have it. John said, it's you. You the person that you're looking for. You the person that you need to deal with. You are the adulterer. You are the fornicator. You are the liar. You are the one that's covering things up. And David had a choice right there to do like some of us did and get mad and get defensive. But David said, no, I am the problem. What if you are the pain? I can see it in the spirit. I know he ain't talking about me, no, man. No, no, what if you are the pain? Are you mature enough? To say, Lord, it's me. Stand in the need of prayer. The Bible says David went to God in prayer. And he says, Lord, search me. If there's anything that's in me that's not like you, I need you to take it away. But David said, if there's any truth to the fact that I cause pain and I am what they call me, I need you to search me and take it away. Why is this important? Because I want to be honorable. Why do I want to be honorable? One, because I want to please God. Two, because I'm getting ready to ask God to blow my mind. Here's a story about the kids. I'll pick on Elijah, because he ain't in here to defend himself. Uh, <laughs> Elijah will act up all week. If he knows he got something, he would do on Friday. He'll act up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday before man, he remembers. I want to ask him if I can go for it tomorrow. Friday morning, he up back in sleeping, washing cars, doing dishes, doing everything. Boy, what are you doing? Oh, I just want to help out. About four or five o'clock comes, right? And we know, we know what he's trying to do. And it's time to go. He says, Oh, I was just wondering if I could go um, next door to my friend's house because they have pool and a skateboard. They want me to go play on the skateboard. Remember, I did the dishes. Remember, I took out the trash. <laughs> What he's doing here, he prepared himself and presented himself out of the before us before he asked us for favor. Uh -huh. I wish you to understand this. Some of us are so dishonorable to God that we'll go to him any kind of way. And I'm not talking about not saying our Father which are in heaven. I'm talking about knowing that we're living a wreck and doing the best we can to stay that way and have the nerve to ask him any more than that. Uh -huh. Y'all lucky I ain't got it. Tell us somebody, tell somebody, thank God for grace. Yeah. And so he had to make sure that he was honored. The question is, what if we actually cause the pain? Are we willing to get ourselves right in order to ask God to blow our minds? And faith has teached us something great about labels. You don't have to be what you've always been. Amen. You might have been a malcontent, but you don't have to remain a malcontent. Amen. You might have been somebody who was a gospel, but you don't have to remain a gospel. Matter of fact, as long as you have breath in your body, that means that God has given you grace to get it right and do it all over again. Amen. The beautiful thing about God is he's saying, listen, I've covered everything you've done about the blood, but I can't let you stay where you are. I need you to fix some things about yourself. God is saying, I want to bless you. It gives me good pleasure to give you the kingdom, but I need you to realize there's some stuff in you that I need to work out of you. And so we've been asking God for something, we've been praying, we've been fasting, and he hasn't done it yet. May I present to you that it's possible that he hasn't done it because he hasn't, you haven't allowed him to fix you yet. So Jabez, he shakes the label. He gets honored in spite of what he's done, in spite of what they say. Somebody in here right now struggling thinking that you're not worthy enough to ask God for what it is that you need. And the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you a future and a hope. Read it in context in Jeremiah 28. You understand, these people had transgressed God so much that he had to punish them. He says, listen, because you flirted with other gods, because you remain honorable with me, I'm going to let you be in bondage for 75 years. I'm going to let you live the consequences for 75 years. He says, but don't worry. Your condition will not be your conclusion. I know the plans I have for you. 
even though you got to deal with some consequences, because y'all know we got to deal with consequences, even though you got to deal with some consequences, I know the plans I have for you, I still have a future and a hope for you. Somebody must have preached that to Jabez. Because Jabez woke up one morning and said, yes, I know I've been pain, I know I've caused pain, but now I'm no longer that person. And in spite of the stuff that I've done in my past, in spite of the issues that I've had in my past, I now know that I am a new creation in Christ. Yeah. And now that I'm a new creation in Christ, what I know is, in spite of my past, he has a plan to prosper me, to give me a future. And I hope if you're sitting here right now and you're wondering if you're worthy, if you'll ever come out of where you are, God says, listen, once you come to me and if you let me transform your heart, I now put you on a path to have a future and a hope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but future and hope we accept, but we don't want to accept the word prosper, the word. Because somebody told us that God wants us to remain miserable. And so when somebody says God wants to prosper you, ah, prosperity preaching, that ain't not something to say. But do you know that God wants to prosper some of us? Uh, see, see, here's, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. And this, 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 this is not a prosperity message by any means. But how many of you really believe that you have the ability to acquire wealth? Raise your hand. That's just what the Word says. It says it in the Word. So, how do you think it's going to happen? He's going to drop it from heaven like a baby on the shore? He's going to come outside? No. He's going to use somebody from the kingdom to finance the vision that he gave you. We, we, we have a vision. We have a vision. Once we get this mortgage situation worked out, to actually build a little homeless village behind us and a lot behind us. We do not have the money. If anybody can write the check right now, raise your hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You need a pen, you need a pen, cash out, tell what you need. Let us know. I'll turn my back. Right there. Okay, then can't nobody write right now. And so that means that God is going to send it through the hands of an individual. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So now here's the question. What if you are the individual that he wants to bless to do? So if God has told you that you are the one that he's given the ability to acquire the wealth. That means that's a promise from God. God is not a man that he should lie. He is a son of man that he should repent. So that means that whatever he said over your life to you is yours. Can I? I'm going to help you. I'm going to pick on another kid. Can I pick on another kid? The, the tall one, where'd she go? She did it. She did it. Okay, good. She can't defend herself. The 14 year old Saturday, right? She has in her birthday wish list. These kids, man, she ain't got a list no more. She got an Amazon shopping cart. Uh, uh, back in the day, we used to write the list out. Busted crayons, and we had to write the list out, right? Uh, now she has an Amazon shopping cart, so we can't make no mistake. It's right here in the car. Right. One night I'm sitting on the couch, she says, Dad, I'm here trying to figure out how to send my cart to you. We need to send the cart. My birthday wish list. Oh, okay. She goes to stay and she sends it to me. I said, okay, I'll look at it. Um, she looked at it while I was sitting at a stoplight the first time. What the world? You know, hey, baby, you, you know what this is? You want some list? Yeah. You know how much this is? Mm -hmm. She was talking to Sister Mariana, I believe, one night, one Thursday night of rehearsal, showing her the list. She says, Girl, how are you going to get all that stuff? She walked up. My dad did it. Uh, <laughs> and then walked off. Uh, now there's some pressure on me. Uh, because she spoke my name. Uh, there's some pressure on me because she testified to the goodness of her father. There, there's some pressure on me because a child with no money spoke that her father would supply the that I do not to it. And so if God spoke to you and said, it's yours, that's a promise over your life. Oh, yeah. After you position your heart and posture to 
towards God and get whatever that's in him in you that's not like him out of the way. Now you have a reasonable expectation and a reasonable assurance that you can ask for that thing. Y'all not hear me? Yeah. Yeah. said, forget about everything that I've done. I'm now in the right position with God. And now that I'm in the right, right position with God, now I get to ask him, Daddy, you remember what you said I was going to have this? Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm going to show you the scripture. Because you act like God don't believe me. It's fine. You ain't got to believe me. I'm going to receive it for myself. Go home and take it I'm going to be good. Okay. He said, he, he said, he with them. This is right after saying he calls faith. Verse 10. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. That's the God we serve. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Anybody bold enough to pray that prayer? Yeah. I almost think that we're conditioned to pray, to pray small prayers. Because somebody has told us not to be selfish. Uh, yeah. I serve a big God. Big God. Yeah. Yeah. I serve a mighty God. Yeah. The earth is the Lord's and the poor is thereof. That means that everything that's in the earth belongs to him. Which means that he, if he owns everything, if he owns the cattle on a thousand hill, and I am his servant, I have every right to ask him for that issue. Yeah. Yeah. They talk about what do you believe, what do you think about the government saying they kill aliens? Two things. One, I think some of y'all strange. <laughs> y'all ain't never seen no strange people walk around Walmart. That's right. I guess that, right? But then two, if they are here, Colossians 1 said that everything exists through him and was made by him, Jesus. So if aliens are here, I guess Jesus made them too. <laughs> Which makes it even bigger God that we serve. Because we know that he's the God of the heavens and the earth, but you know in between the heavens and the earth is the Milky Way and all the planets, which means that if they are here, he created them. So if he's that big to create them, he's that big to create my territory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he said, bless me. You know how full of conviction a God has forgiven you for the pain that you caused. To say, Lord, bless me. Do you know how, how many people whose, whose voices you got to tune out that said you're not worthy to be blessed? For you to say, forget what you said about what I did. Yeah. Lord, bless me. Yeah. Sometimes you have to turn your back to the very people that have been down talking you because of your past and your mistakes and turn straight to God and say, Lord, bless me. Forget yeah. what they're saying, Lord. Bless me. Forget what they forget what they're going to think. Lord, bless me. As a matter of fact, God, I don't care what they say about me as long as you bless me. Yeah. Yeah. So when he said, bless me, what he meant was, Consecrate and set me apart from everybody else. Why do I want to be set apart? Because now I'm going to ask you to enlarge my territory. And when you enlarge my territory, I want people to know that when I show up my new territory, that I belong to you. Yeah. 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 You know that when someone moves into a new home and they call us one of the elders to anoint their home, that's what we're doing. We're taking the oil and we're blessing their home. That way, when the enemy tries to step foot on that property, he recognizes, just like he recognizes the blood on the doorpost, he recognizes the oil on the doorpost and says, listen, I can't do what I want to do in this house. This house belongs to the Lord. So we say, Lord, I want you to bless me, because when you enlarge my territory, I know the vultures are coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let God start to bless you and let you get you find the presence that you never had before. Now, I'm not going to tell you, you know, some preachers are against you playing a lot of them, some people are... Preachers say, go ahead and play it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you that if you win. Let me know if you need the church mailing address. Sister Faye in the back, she'll go ahead and put you at our just love us. Right, 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 right. But fool around and win and find out you got cousins you ain't never heard of. Lord, I want you to bless me. I want you to anoint me. Because why? When you anoint me, when you bless me, you give me discernment. You give me wisdom. You give me the ability to see a snake in the grass. Because when you enlarge my here's the thing. You enlarge my territory. You're taking me places I've never been before. Wow. So I need you to bless me. Jacob says, listen, I know I've caused pain, but I want you to bless me. Wow. Can anybody pray that prayer? I know that I've caused pain. I know that I've hurt people. I know that, yes, I've been hurt, but I've been hurting as well. But God, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for not letting me die in the middle of that mess. I thank you for restoring me. I thank you for forgiving me. God, I thank you for the blood that covered me, past, present, and future. Now, bless me. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory.
territory. Now I know how you can trust me with the territory because I've changed my heart. I know you can trust me with the territory because I'm pointing towards you now. Bless me. See, God got to get that bold in your prayers. But the scripture says that we can go boldly to the, do you know what bold is? Bold is that, that bill collector that keep calling even though you say don't call me no more. That's bold. You try to change your place. He don't hear. This is not his number. He'll come back tomorrow. That's bold. Uh, now, they can be bold. But the bill collector, the scripture says we can boldly come to the throne of grace. No. When was the last time you were bold in your prayer? Matter of fact, I dare you to be bold in your prayer this week. Yeah. I dare you to bless me. Heal me. Touch me. Restore me. I dare to be bold in your prayer this week. Well, Boldness is confidence. Yeah. I'm going to talk about child number three. Chanel. That's a little rat size dog. Chanel was bold. She's small, but she ain't got no fear. Somebody walk in the house. Hey, 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 hey. Just look at her. Back at you. Uh -huh. She don't move. Benji burned through the house. Benji can stand on his hind legs and lick me right in the face. That's how Benji is. Uh -huh. The stand is up this tall and stand. About 120 pounds muscles. Uh -huh. Benji running the house, she'll go chasing him. Uh -huh. No, no, I'm serious. He running the house, he go to his crate every night. As soon as he come here, <laughs> she tries to chase after him. Uh -huh. Benji don't worry, he just, he like, girl, I will, yeah, I'm going to my crate right now. But Chanel, they said, I'm going to be bold. What is she saying? This is my house. I don't know if it's as thing here, but this is my house. This is me right here. You come in here, you got to fear for me. As silly as it sounds for a little, little rat dog, I call it a rat rope, but uh, <laughs> silly as it sounds for a little rogue dog to think that she runs that big old house. That's how the boldness we're supposed to have before we got to pray. I know I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But by faith I receive it. Yeah. Because I receive it, I can boldly go to the throne of grace. Oh, yeah. And ask for grace in the time of need. That's what James did. He said, I know I don't deserve it. I did not earn it, but by faith I receive my forgiveness. I receive my restoration. I receive the fact that I'm no longer the person that I used to be. Now I'm gonna boldly go to the throne of grace and say, Lord, bless me and the Lord my faith. Yeah. 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 So he says, Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Yeah. Be with me in everything that I do. Yeah. When you ask God to enlarge your territory, whatever that territory is, for some of us, we may want God to enlarge our territory in health. They want God to enlarge our territory in peace. We just want peace. We got everything. We just want some peace. I got everything. Yo, I just want some peace in my life. Uh -huh. Some of us may want God to enlarge our territory financially. Whatever it is that you're asking God to enlarge, Make sure that you ask the people to put everything that you do. Yes. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways of God, and he will direct your path. Lord, I want you to direct my path. In, every, in this new season of life, this yeah. new enlarged territory season of life, I want you to guide me every step of the way. Because I know this, but if you're not with me, I'm going to be left to myself. And the worst thing God can do is leave us to ourselves. Anybody ever think they were making the right decision and didn't consult God and you made that decision and woke up through me and said, oh, what in the world did I do? He said, you didn't consult me. Yeah. Yeah. Please give me all I do and keep me from harm and from pain. Jabez says, listen, I know I caused hurt. I hurt my mother. She labeled me pain. Some of us have been labeled some things not, uh, not, not unfairly based off the life that we put I'm, I'm, it's okay, y'all. We, we all ask something. As Paul says in Corinthians, as were some of you, we were all, we all did something. Now, before we got saved, we all hurt somebody. After we've been saved, inadvertently or intentionally, we've all hurt somebody. But he says, listen, I'm going to shape the label of my actions. I'm going to turn my heart toward God. And I'm going to say, Lord, now I need you to bless me. Yeah. And when you're blessing me, why are you blessing me? I'm asking you to bless me for a reason. I want you to anoint me because I'm asking you to enlarge my territory at the same time. Wow. 
Yeah. I got to be Lord for my territory. I want you to be with me in everything that I do. I yeah. want you to guide the steps of the good man are ordered by I want you to be with me everywhere that I go. He said, and I want you to keep me from harm and danger. Y'all yeah. yeah. know what happened? The very next verse, it said, God did what he asked. Yeah. The Bible doesn't say how long he waited. Some scholars speculate it was instant. Some say it could have been a few years. What we do know is God did do it. Yeah. So you're going to pray that prayer this week. If you choose to take the challenge, you dare to accept it. And you got to make a conscious decision. That until God does what he says, until God takes your condition to the conclusion it should be, but you got to tune out every voice that doesn't sound like that. Yeah. Even if it means your own voice. Yeah. If we're be honest, sometimes we're our worst own enemies to our own thing. Yeah. Because we will look ourselves in the mirror and declare the promise of God and somehow to say we're not worthy of those promises that we just declared. Uh -huh. And so you're going to have to make a decision this week to say, you know what? Not only am I going to declare the promise of God over my life, but I'm going to declare that I'm worthy to have it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to declare that I am qualified to have it. I'm going to declare that God wants to bless me, that God wants me to have in my territory. Why? Because God says, now that you turn your heart towards me, I can trust you with territory. Yeah. He said he did just what he yes. Who's up for the challenge? Yeah. Who's up for the challenge? I'll be honest with you all. I've gotten to a point where I said, Lord, I want you to enlarge my territory. Territory for me has nothing to do with property. I mean, I mean, everybody's territory is different. I've asked God to enlarge my reach for the kingdom. I've seen the pull from different regions. I said, Lord, make it a, make it a way to where I can take care of home, but still do what you call me to do. Yeah. Enlarge my reach. That's what it means. Enlarge my, enlarge my reach. It's saying he's saying enlarge my capacity to hold forth. Yeah. That's been my prayer. But I realized two days ago, studying this, I came here at the altar. I realized I haven't been bold in my declaration. I said, Lord, to enlarge my territory. If it's your will, we'll enlarge my territory. <laughs> J. Ben says, I already know it's your will. Yeah. Now do it. I already know you want to do it. Now, do it. And like that child of ours, that's 14 and growing every 30 minutes, hey, brother, I have a blessed assurance and a boldness in faith to know that whatever I'm asking my father to do, he's doing it. All you have to do well. So here, here, here's, here's the challenge for us. Caleb put pressure on me. So Sister Mariana, my dad gonna figure it out. Now you're speaking my name to me. Yeah, now you're speaking my name. I can't let it look like I didn't take care of what I was supposed to take care of. So in the morning, I gotta go do some pest control. And then on Tuesday, I'm gonna do something else. <laughs> and on Wednesday, I'll pick up two more clients at the gym because painting is Friday. By the time Friday get here, I'm gonna have, by the grace of God, what it is that she can put my name out there. Now, 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 if I can be that concerned about my little thing, imagine how the God of the universe is. Yes. Uh, when you put his name in the yeah. 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 When you tell them, I don't, I'm not worried, my God will provide. Yeah. You can say what you want to, my God is going to take care of me. Yeah. yeah, okay, if you want me to move, well, God's going to enlarge my territory anyway. Matter of fact, I need to move, so I'm about to blow up out this place right now. What if, how do you feel he's going to feel when he says, my child is putting my name out there? Yeah. Yeah. So the challenge this week is to be bold in your confession. You fix your heart towards God as Jabez did. You caused pain in one season of life, and now you look at yourself in the mirror and allow God to restore you. And so now that you've been restored, you can say, now, God, thank you for restoring me. Yeah. God, bless me. Oh, yeah. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Mm -hmm. Keep your hand upon me and keep me away from all harm. Yeah. And if he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, 
The way that he blessed Jabez in verse 10, he's got to bless us the same way. Your resume says faithful. Mm -hmm. By faith, you receive everything that God has done that he's going to do. By faith, none of us have heard it. It's by faith through grace that we qualify for the things that God has for us. The reason why Jabez, a notorious person that caused faith, was able to say bless me and have an expectation for God to do it and watch God do what he has is because by faith he received everything that God did it for him. And so by faith, in the fact that Jesus went to that cross, pierced in the side, shed blood, went into a borrowed tomb, and got up three days later, and is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, by faith, receiving the fact that that blood was shed for you, you now qualify. Oh, yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. By faith. So as Pastor comes, she's going to pray for you. Then we're going to get ready to share at the Lord's table. But if you don't get nothing else out of today, Walk out of here saying I qualify. Yeah. 